All right, joining me this afternoon is Vince Mayfield of Fit Wizards. Vince, how are you? I'm doing great, Jared. How are you today? I am doing good. Uh, it has been a morning of interviews, and I'm happy to do this again with you as we continue our discussion and recaps around the school sense uh, or the school uh, half cent sales tax um, and all of your insight as a committee member on the oversight uh, committee. So thank you again for joining me uh, as we kind of go through some of this. Absolutely. And we certainly appreciate you and appreciate the fact that you're taking the time to, to let us get the message out into the community about exactly what's going on so that our citizens stay informed. And that's exactly what the Citizens Advisory Council was appointed for. And certainly you and the media uh, being able to help us get that message out there. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive into um, what happened um, at the last one. I know it was it was filmed and people can can watch a recap of it, but something that uh, you guys learned was that they're going to uh, the first installments of some of the money are going to be happening this month uh yeah in april the first installments of the money as you know that you know obviously the the bill passed in november uh they start collecting the sales tax in um in january and the sales tax money doesn't come all at once you know at one time it comes a little bit at a time and it's seasonal so uh and they collected uh roughly uh, at the end of, of uh, in arrears, and they will get their first installments of that money uh, in April. Awesome. And I know that uh, at that meeting, Jacob's uh, Titan was there and they discussed a pretty cool feature um, that they're developing, which is a dashboard. Can you uh, talk a little bit about what you know on that? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the CEO, uh, Joe, um, uh, Les Rose was there and uh, Joel Lender, who is one of their, their key guys. Uh, and uh, they came to show us uh, to talk a little bit about the projects and the planning and the things that were going on. But one of the key points there they brought up was that they have a dashboard, which is in keeping with the transparency that we talked about with the, uh, the school district and the Citizens Advisory Council. They were looking for our input based upon the dashboard that they had put together. But what types of information would we like to see? What do we think would be uh, that the public would like to see? And this is a dashboard and a site that's going to be put out there as the construction projects are going along so that people can see, you know, the different phases and how much money is being spent. But even more so, they're also talking about uh, tying in some of the types of things like camps where you can look at the sites where, say, a multi-purpose room or a cafetorium is being built, and you can see it as it's being constructed over time. That way there's full transparency to the public, and that way people can see how their tax funds are being spent as it's happening. Uh, that's, that's actually really great. Did they give any indication on when they're hoping to maybe have an initial launch of that dashboard? We didn't get, uh, we, you know, we, we, what we saw was a pretty formidable dashboard as it existed right now, um, and they're in the in the throes of building it. But I, you know, as a software developer myself, um, it, I would say they were probably eighty percent of the way there. Uh, what they were looking for in that is sort of that iterative process and getting some feedback from uh, uh, some from the Citizen Advisory Council, of course, and then from end users so that they can make that that. Uh, dashboard of that website with the dashboard uh, the most useful to the public. I mean, you can put way too many details in it that nobody's going to look at. It's got to be very intuitive. It's got to give people that high level information, but then those that want the detail can kind of dig down uh, and, they, and they're not going to be able to make everybody happy. But I think it'll be I, it, what I saw was extremely well done um, and, and well thought out. And so um, they took some of the feedback from the board and they're going to go back and they're implement that. And um, I suspect that uh, by the time we start launching uh, actual physical, the, the start of the actual construction, construction projects, you'll start to see uh, those numbers and that data roll in there and, and make it available to the public. Uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing how that all turns out to be able to uh, dig into some of the data and see the progress um, myself. I know after our last uh, interview and I, um, and you've you've talked with some people too, there's been some some definitions and some terms that have been thrown out there and I don't think everybody knows kind of what they mean and, and you've got some interesting definitions that you kind of wanted to discuss too. So what you got for us on that? Well, there's a couple of things that, that they gave us an, an abbreviated glossary of construction terms and, um, and, and you know, for the people that, uh, it, it, in the public, if you think you know about construction, you think about something that you know, which is your house, if you've ever built a house or uh, or what you might do in terms of repair, that type of thing. 
But when you get into large scale, large scale commercial construction like this, there's a whole different set of, of terminologies there. And uh, they had a couple of good ones, you know, I, I, and I thought I might mention a few of them that we talked about just because they're important to know um, from the standpoint of where we're at in the process right now. Um, and they were, uh, I, as you know, last time I talked to you about guaranteed minimum pricing. So when we talk about projects, there's two different uh, terms that you'll hear. You'll see things that are called pre-GMT, which is uh, pre-guaranteed minimum pricing. And that's the work that has to be done prior to the actual building of a project, including the, it, it includes the design phase and uh, figuring out the cost of development. And then there is uh, actual GMP, which is the actual physical building of the project. So when you hear uh, people talk about that, um, it's the two things, it's pre-GMP and then there's GMP. And um, in, a, in a guaranteed maximum price scenario, it's a contract where the contractor is paid for the actual costs that are incurred in addition to the fixed fee that has a ceiling cap. So in effect, what it does, it means that the, the folks that are, um, the, the school has some insulation from price increases happening due to the cost of materials being more. In fact, if you talk to Alan Baguette of the Billing Association, he'll tell you, that you know, uh, a, you know, a year ago, a piece of uh, plywood was fifteen dollars, and now it's almost forty dollars a sheet. I know some people that are building construction projects, and it's increased their projects by almost forty percent. So the way the school system does this is actually uh, uh, helps insulate them from these types of uh, extraneous issues that may come up uh, during the process uh, that are affected based on upon what's going on in the market. Yeah, and um, you and I talked uh, briefly about how they're going to be grouping um, some of these construction projects together. Can you explain a little bit of what that means and, and why they're going to be doing that? Yeah, so, you know, if you talk to the, if you wouldn't, you talk to all the schools and all the different people, everybody wants their project done, you know, right away, right? So, um, and the, the schools are cognizant based upon need. Uh, or the school district is, you know, we talked about the first priorities were going to be um, the security, finishing up the security enhancements. We talked about the fact that they're going to go in and they're going to fix roofs and things like that that are really important. Uh, we are in the pre-GMP phases right now for the projects that are going to get started. And this is the planning phases where they're fleshing out all of the cost and what it's going to take to build them. And so what they're trying to do is even though maybe uh, Ruckel Middle School wants to get their cafetorium sooner, right? What they're trying to do, and then maybe they weren't really planning on, or it, you know, maybe rights isn't high on the priority until later. They're grouping them together, and the reason why they're grouping them together is if you're building ten cafetoriums across the district, you go to somebody they've got to make one design, right? They've got to they price it out one time instead of doing. 10 different projects over a 10 year period. So they're grouping things together to get a better economy of scale and in turn being better stewards of the money for the taxpayers here in Oklahoma County. So that would be right now the first group of things that um, I know that are uh, that they've grouped together are cafetoriums, uh, classroom additions, and uh, new multi-purpose buildings at the different schools. And so that'll beg the question, what's a cafetorium? Well, it's an auditorium that converts between a cafeteria and an auditorium. And then the other question is, what's a multi-purpose room? Well, very similarly, it's a room that can be used as a, as a classroom or it can be used as an auditorium, or it can be used as a place where they do activities or things like that that need to be done, like for example, gym inside during the day or something of that nature, study hall, those types of things. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's great. And it was really interesting to hear that um, explanation on that. Um, another thing that we heard throughout the half cent uh, campaign and, and, and moving forward is, well, why don't you just build a new school? And there's some restrictions or requirements, I guess, that have to go into that. Am I right? Yeah, that's correct. So um, as I understand it, it's another one of the definitions or terms that they put together. And again, I'm not a 100% expert on this, but uh, they have a thing called FISH, which is the, the Florida inventory of schoolhouses and basically it's an inventory of all school facilities in the state of florida by county and each district's required to maintain the accuracy of that in, uh, inventory and submit a letter of validation each year on the number of students the, the 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 occupancy of it so when you want to go build a school 
right? There's some rules, and I don't remember, you have to I, quote me whether it's 80% or 90% occupancy, but it, the school has to be at a point where if I need to build this new school, I have to be able to pull within that area and fill that school to 80 to 90% of that capacity at the time that I do it, right? Which means you can't cannibalize everything off of all the existing schools, right? So there are rules by which how they have to do that. And there's also a whole set of standards by which schools are built in the state of Florida. There's a whole series of regulations that have to be done in terms of how security is laid out, that kind of stuff. So when you build a new school, there's a lot of things that go into that. And you have to get approval from the state to do it. Yeah, no, that's... Um... That's that's great to hear, and um, it's really interesting about you know you know they're them taking into the fact that you're not being able to pull from the other schools to make it happen. You've got to be able to make it happen um, right then and there. Um, so right, I mean when, you want to get your overflow. So like if you were 125 or 110 percent capacity, right, or you're getting when you're at 80 percent, you've got to start to be planning for how close am I going to be to 100 or 100 and you know 20 so that I can get to the point and between that plus the additional growth how do i get it till i can build this new school and then get it at where it's 80 percent capacity does that, right. that make sense yeah oh yeah um so when is the next um meeting for the committee it is the last thursday of the month next month and there will be or this month we're now in april um and so um there will be another public announcement again it's a public meeting anybody can uh listen to it live as we're doing it uh, and um, in complete transparency to the voters. Um, again, there is myself. I know there are others uh, in the Crestview area that are going back and talking to uh, their, uh, you know, the folks within their chambers and people within their communities to let them know what's going on. And uh, we're going to continue to share this information out there so that the public doesn't have to sit in those meetings. But if they want to, they are certainly welcome to come in and, and see what we've got going on. Well, Vince, I really appreciate you coming on again and uh, giving us a, a, a recap of all the highlights that are happening there and uh, just helping us keep the people updated on what is happening uh, with the half cent sales tax. I really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for coming on again. Thank you, Jared.